A focal spot is the area of the anode surface which receives the beam of electrons from the cathode, which we call the incident electron beam. The line focus principle explains how the angle of the anode surface affects the size of the affected focal spot. To talk about the focal spot and line focus principle, let's first dissect the anode into its smaller components. Most anodes, like this one, are shaped like beveled disks. Here we have a drawing of the anode, and here we have a small section of the anode. Here we have a section of the anode on the left and the cathode on the right. There are three important terms that you need to know. The first is the incident electron beam. The incident electron beam are those electrons leaving the cathode and traveling to the anode. The width of the incident electron beam is determined by the width of the filament on the cathode. Second, the actual focal spot. The actual focal spot is the physical area on the anode that when bombarded by the incident electron beam emits x-rays. Third is the effective focal spot. The effective focal spot is the area projected onto the patient. The size of the actual focal spot is determined by the size and shape of the incident electron beam when it strikes the anode surface. There are three things that influence the size of the incident electron beam. One is the width of the filament coil, two is construction of the focusing cup, and three is position of the filament inside of the focusing cup. As an x-ray tech, the only control you have over the size of the incident electron beam is by selecting the appropriate width of the filament coil. We do this by selecting either the small or large filament. You can select the small or large filament by selecting the small or large focal spot size on your control console. On the left is an x-ray tube using a small filament and on the right is an x-ray tube using a large filament. Notice how the width of the effective focal spot changes when you select the small filament versus the large filament. The smaller filament produces a smaller effective focal spot and the larger filament produces a larger effective focal spot. There are a number of pros and cons to having a small or large actual focal spot and there are a number of pros and cons to having a small or large effective focal spot. The small actual focal spot has a few pros and cons. A couple pros of the small actual focal spot are that it is good for imaging thin body parts and it produces a small effective focal spot. However, a con of a small actual focal spot is that it is poor at dissipating heat because less of the anode surface area is being used. The large actual focal spot also has a handful of pros and cons. A few pros of the large actual focal spot is that it is great at dissipating heat because more of the anode surface is being used. It is also good at imaging thick body parts and it is good when you need to use a short exposure time. However, a con of a large actual focal spot is that it produces a large effective focal spot. The huge benefit of a small effective focal spot versus a large effective focal spot is the small effective focal spot has an increase in spatial resolution and thus produces greater detail. How else can we change the effective focal spot other than changing the size of the incident electron beam? This is where the line focus principle comes in. By altering the angle of the anode, we can alter the size of the effective focal spot Let's see what happens when we go from a 45 degree angle to something like a 20 degree angle. On the left is an x-ray tube using a small anode angle, and on the right is an x-ray tube using a large anode angle. Notice how the width of the effective focal spot changes when using a small anode angle versus the large anode angle. Again, there are a number of pros and cons to having a small or large anode angle.
A small anode angle has a few pros and cons. The biggest benefit of a small anode angle is it creates a small effective focal spot, thus increasing spatial resolution and recorded detail. A couple cons of a small anode angle is that it limits the size of usable x-ray field and it creates an anode heel effect. The anode heel effect will be covered in depth in another lecture, but we can quickly touch on the size of the usable x-ray field. The area of the useful beam is determined by the angle of the anode. Notice how the anode on the right, which has close to a 45 degree angle, has the widest useful beam. The anode on the left has a narrower useful beam. The central ray is designated by a dashed green line. In order to completely cover a 14 by 17 cassette at a 40 inch SID, you would need a minimum anode angle of 12 degrees. And that's everything on focal spot and line focus principle. Be sure to be very familiar with the differences between the incident electron beam, the actual focal spot, and the effective focal spot. Because in radiography there are rarely absolutes when picking techniques, you'll need to know the pros and cons of a small or large actual focal spot and effective focal spot, plus the pros and cons of a small and large angle with the line focus principle.